Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Austin Robinson. Some of you may know me as Space Case. Today's video is going to be a little different. I won't be doing any art. Instead, I will be packing all these orders and talking to you about how I quit my job and became a full-time artist. I saw a comment the other day that said, you just can't make a living doing art full-time. So I wanted to share some behind the scenes thing and explain that you can. And as long as you're willing to work hard and make some sacrifices, you can become your own boss and make a living doing exactly what you want to do. So first things first, I have a bunch of orders to pack up. So we're going to start doing that. A lot of these orders are my brand new pins that I just dropped. Go to my Etsy, check out my brand new enamel pins. If you don't live in New Jersey, they might not be your thing, but in my opinion, they're possibly the greatest pins to ever, you know, grace the face of the earth. But, but who am I? Besides your benevolent overlord, buy my pins. Insert brainwashing propaganda here. So before I even get into how I've started doing art full time and how I've made it work for me, I'm gonna uh, talk about the job I was working before this. In 2017, I went back to the first job I ever worked, and that was cooking in a kitchen. So I went back to cooking, I did my best to help out in the restaurant, and it was a cool job. Like, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of say there, and I mean, I enjoy being in charge. That's why I wanted to go into business myself. The more I worked there, the more power they gave me, and eventually I started doing all the scheduling, and just a lot of, like, manager-type duties. But I started Space Case Up, my art brand, and behind the scenes when I wasn't working long hours and going to school full time, I was trying my hardest to just produce content and art all the time for Instagram and for my Etsy shop and just trying to like really find my style. So the more stuff I was producing, the more Etsy sales I was getting and the more Etsy sales I was getting, the harder I wanted to work at it. So I would go and I would work at that job 40 plus hours a week, sometimes 50. I was in college full time, so I was putting in hours there, putting in hours at my job, and then any spare time I had, I was just giving to art. I would still go out with friends sometimes, but for the most part, any spare time, I wasn't wasting. I was taking advantage of every hour of the day, trying to make as much art as I could, and trying to just find my path with all of my creations. The harder I worked, like the bigger my brand progressively got. And I started doing a lot of in-person vending events and I was making a decent amount of money at all of these events, which was really helping out. I had my regular job income plus all of my art income. So I just really started saving a lot of money and taking all of the art income and putting it into getting new products made, getting better materials to just like finely tune my craft. I think around June of 2018, I just really started to feel like maybe that job wasn't for me. I wanted to be in charge and I wanted to be the main manager. And it just seemed like I was being given those duties, but I wasn't being paid accordingly. And then, you know, one day I would be expected to do like a lot of manager type things and the next day I was just another employee that like I need to keep my brain in the kitchen. There just it wasn't consistent for me and I needed something that was like consistent and I'm either in charge or I'm not. I need to know if I'm working very hard for a reason or if I should just work regular, do my kitchen job and just go about my day without caring as much for the grand scheme of things happening in the restaurant. So I was starting to get really frustrated. And at the same time, my Etsy shop was really taking off. I was making a lot more money than ever. I was doing a lot of in-person sales and it was getting to the point where I was having these horrible days at work, but I would be getting all these notifications from my phone that like, you made a sale, you made a sale, you made a sale. And then one day I made enough sales while I was having a bad day at work that it ended up being more money than I was getting paid hourly there. So say I made $100 a day there, I had made 150 online in that one day. And after having a bad day of like doing a normal job and coming home and seeing, wow, like I'm only giving art and stuff part of my time because I'm spending so much time in this restaurant. I wonder what would happen if I did it full time. So I kept that idea in my head. More and more, I was just kind of like, I really don't think that I need to work here anymore. So I ended up deciding, all right, I'm going to give my two weeks. I had saved enough money from working and from doing all of my art stuff that I would be fine. In July, my best friend Keenan was visiting from Florida for a month, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna put my two weeks in, I'll stop working in July, I'll spend all that time hanging out with my friend, I'll make art, I'll take July, and I won't work. I'll go on vacation with my family at the end of July and August, I'll take that vacation, I'll come back, I'll find a new job, whatever. At the time, I honestly wasn't planning on doing art full time, I just knew, cool, I'll have my art to keep me paying my bills through July, and like, I'll be fine, nothing bad will happen. 
So keep producing art, keep doing all that. I come home from vacation in August and I started putting some applications out there basically to keep running kitchens. I was looking to manage more kitchens. I get a response from Rowan University, which I was super excited about. I had applied for a position to run their kitchen and I was super excited to hear back to them because, I mean, working for a college and running their kitchens, I would be probably making quite a good amount of money. So they schedule an interview with me, get all dressed up, got my tie, my button up shirt, go in there, I have the meeting and the whole time we're just talking, everything's going great and they're like, all right, yeah, we're going to bring you on. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I just got this amazing salary job. This guy just got done telling me about how we're going to be cooking for the president of Italy or something. Some crazy people that I was about to meet through this job. And he says, yeah, I want to show you around the kitchen. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to like go on a tour. I might meet some employees. Basically, I'm going to like meet the people that I'll be managing and like I'll get to know them, get to know the system here. Cool. We're walking through. He's showing me everything. And then he brings me to this little smoothie hut in their food court. And he's like, yeah, this is where you'll be working. So I kind of was like, all right thinking like, okay, maybe I start running this and then like, as they see how I do in my first month or something, they give me more of the huts and then I start running their main dining kitchen. Just thought maybe like, all right, they have to just test the waters with you. Well, a woman walks up and he's like, oh yeah, like this is the woman that'll be in charge of you. She runs the smoothie stand. So I'm like, what, hold on, like what exactly would my position be? And they're like, oh, well you'll be cooking here and you're gonna like start off just making smoothies for $10 an hour. I looked at them and was just like, what? This interview was to run your entire kitchen thing and you're, you're gonna, tell me that I'm gonna make smoothies. Like, why did, why did I even bother coming to this interview if I applied for like management and running your kitchens and you bring me in to interview me about that? Why in the world would you say, all right, yeah, you're gonna make smoothies? So I walked out of that job feeling really defeated, feeling really just, just super disrespected by the fact that I even had to waste my time and go up to that interview. So I'm just furious, like straight out of a movie, like undoing my tie, unbuttoning my shirt, just so angry, didn't know what I was gonna do. So I get to my car and I'm like, go home, reevaluate some things, figure out what you're gonna do. So I come home and I had more Etsy orders. Furious, like whatever, I'm just gonna pack these orders and that's gonna help me like relax so I'm packing all these orders up and I check my bank account to like make sure like the money went through from Etsy and I just looked and I was like you know what pretty sure that I could make enough right now to pay my bills so maybe I'll like I'll take a break and I'll just you know we'll, we'll see how the sales go at the same time I was like well I don't want to put all my eggs in this basket you know self-employment is a dangerous field so I'll I'll go to school again I'll start training for electrical work but I was like you know what in the meantime, like I'll start school, then I'll eventually I'll get a position as an a helper slash apprentice. And I'll do that. I'll make my money with electric. So the more time went on through September, I started school, blah, blah, blah. I was able to pay for school through all my art money, which was like, okay, like, cool, I'm making some money. And then October came and I had festivals and vending events lined up for the entire month, just every single weekend, sometimes twice a weekend, constantly selling things. So I ended up making so much off of my art and vending in person during those times that it was like, oh man, like I think I'm like actually don't want to work anymore. But it was still like, ah, I just don't think I'm making enough. And then November was a low month. I didn't make much in November. So I was even more scared. And I was like, you know what? I think I definitely need to go get an electric job. And then December came and you know, Christmas season, people are getting Christmas gifts. It just skyrocketed again. So at this point I'm at five months of doing art myself. I am not filling out these orders whatsoever. I'm so like involved in talking. I'm about five months in and I'm still thinking like, you know what, I'm making money, but it just doesn't feel like a job. And I, it makes me kind of feel like maybe I'm just saying that I'm doing art as a job to make myself feel better about being unemployed. But then, I mean, people that start electric businesses, everyone has to start a business at some time for that thing to exist. Those people aren't unemployed, they own a business. So I was trying to wrap that around my head and get it in my head that like, you know what, you don't have to do this typical, you know, nine to five. You can make your own money. You can make your own path in this world as long as you're working hard and doing your best to get your products out there. It's just like kind of a real struggle for me to like just come to terms with like, yeah, I do this full time and I'm proud of myself for this. And to just feel like, you know what? Yeah, I'm doing this. This is me. Awesome. New Year's Eve, my girlfriend and I went and stayed in Philly and damn it. I think the Sharpie's running out. Shoot. Guys, take five. 
Watch this space case commercial while I go get another Sharpie. Every assumption that man has ever made about space has been wrong. There is absolutely no reason why we can't think we're wrong now if we think we're the only life out there. I got a new Sharpie and we got one order packed. So thank you, Deanna Hens, for buying pins. I appreciate you beyond belief. Back to our story. I don't remember where I left off. Oh, okay. So New Year's Eve, take my girlfriend to Philly. We stay there for the uh, New Year's. I get in an Uber and the Uber driver's talking to this other girl that was sitting in the front seat. She had asked him how long he had been doing Uber and he was like, oh, like think about a year now. And she was like, oh, like what did you do before this? And he was like, oh, I was managing some kind of like factory area. So I kind of stopped and I was like, that's interesting that he would like leave a management job like that to do Uber. Like that's pretty interesting so she was like oh like do you make enough money to do that which was like kind of a brave question to ask somebody but whatever was a necessary question I suppose and he went on to tell her about how he makes about the same amount that he made at his old job doing this except now he gets to set his own hours be his own boss and he was talking about how much of an adjustment it was for him to make and it was just directly applying to how I was feeling. Like it was my exact situation. And I was thinking like, man, this is kind of weird. Like these are the exact things I've been struggling with. And this guy's just like talking about it. And I'm, I'm not a talkative person with like strangers. So I wasn't really talking. And then once that lady got out, I was like, hey, I just want to say like hearing you say all that was really interesting because I'm dealing with all those same things of working for myself and it not really feeling like a real job because I don't have like set hours or somebody telling me what to do. And he basically just gave me this pep talk of like, it does take a second to adjust, especially when you're used to working in that like kind of nine to five or eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, or however many days and hours you work. You're used to working in like an organized structure. He's like, and it definitely takes a second when you're working for yourself to make that. And he was like, are you able to pay your bills? I'm like, yeah, I pay my bills every month and I'm never late. Like, I'm fine. I get to take my girlfriend to Philly for New Year's Eve and we stayed in a little house for three days. I have money to do these things. And he was like, well, then what are you worried about? I'm driving you to a restaurant right now so you can buy her dinner. Like, what are you worried about? And I was like, you know what? Like, man, this guy's right. As much as I don't want him to be right and like, I want him to say, nah, man, like, don't do it. Just go back to work. As creative as I am, I am somebody that just loves an organized structure, which is why I've been really trying to like turn my own business into an organized thing. I can get all my creativity out on paper and on canvas and make all these creative things. But when it comes to the business side of things, I want it to be very structured. That's why I have all these printed orders. I keep everything very organized, keep receipts of everything. It's all very organized on the business side of things because I would like to see it grow and I want to see it get big. And I can't do that with zero organization. You can't wing it and somehow become a very successful big business. Yeah, that's right. I said big business, all right? Walmart, Target, Space Case, all in the same shopping complex. I'm like making enough money to pay my bills, but I'm like not making crazy money. Like I don't, I don't want anybody to get me wrong here. I'm not making like millions of dollars. I am by no means rich. I wouldn't even call myself middle class at this point. I can pay my bills. I can buy my girlfriend dinner sometimes. <laughs> that's it. I can get art supplies and I can get these pins that you should all go check out because they're awesome. I have money to get new products, but besides that point, I was gonna use January as my month to just figure everything out for the year. So I put out that in 2019, I will, dot 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 video. And at the same time I decided, you know what? I got this film degree last year. I don't wanna work for like a TV studio or something like that. So I should keep putting it to use by producing my own videos for my YouTube. And at the same time, like I can make videos related to art that will let me get my personality out there, get my art out there. And honestly, even if I'm not getting a bunch of views, every view is one person that now knows that guy is an artist and he has a brand because I'm, I make it very clear that I'm an artist and I have a brand pins buy the pins so I decided you know what cool like that's gonna be my marketing this year I'm gonna use YouTube and I'm gonna use Instagram and I'm gonna market all my art hard Captain ADHD coming at you again with a piece of paper why am I folding this so fast forward we get through January we have a plan put out videos things are going good I'm getting more attention today is Monday yesterday actually yeah not even not even a long time ago, yesterday, I woke up and I was just like, what am I doing? Like, why, why am I doing this? I need to just go get a job, be normal, stop trying to make my living, doing my own thing. Like, what are you doing? This is just, what are you doing? So I'm just kind of like feeling like crap. I get up, I make coffee, whatever. I sit down, I guess I'll do something business related, but 
this is pointless. I'm not making enough money right now. So I'm sitting there working on something and Haley's laying on the bed and all of a sudden my phone dings and it's little Etsy cha-ching and I was like, oh, well that's cool. Like I made an order. And then there was another cha-ching and then another cha-ching and another cha-ching and another cha-ching and another cha-ching. And, cha and then I get a few Instagram DMs. All of, it was, it was very weird how it happened all at once, right when I was saying like, man, I think it might be time to like hang it up and go get a real job. I ended up making like basically all the money I needed to make to pay my bills for February, already made by like February 3rd. So I was like, well, that was, that was really weird. And I started thinking and I was like, that had to be a sign from the universe that like, don't you freaking dare quit. Like you, keep doing this because you're doing the right thing. So I kind of took that sign from the universe and I was like, you know what? Time to put my head down and go even harder with art. And then that brings us into today where I am now packing and getting ready to ship all of these items, all of the stuff that sold yesterday. So real quick, I just want to thank those people. Thank you, Carly Whittefield. Thank you. This person didn't put their name. They just wrote your daddy. So like, thanks, your daddy. John Walker, thank you. Thank you, Carrie Goodwin. I already said her name, but thank you, Deanna Hens, and thank you, Rachel Bradway. I appreciate all of you ordering. You guys saved me from wanting to just quit and go get a normal job. So now that we are in present day, that was my story of how I quit my job and have been doing art now full time for about six or seven months which feels insane to say. Like I have been making my own living, not being told what to do by anybody, getting to do exactly what I want to do every single day for about seven months. And honestly, it feels really awesome to be able to say that. And even saying it out loud and acknowledging it is a really cool feeling. So if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram at Space Case Illustration. Any questions you have related to buying art or if you're a creator yourself and you just want some advice on what you should do or you have extra questions that maybe I didn't cover in this video, feel free to ask. Social media links are in the description down below. If you would like to support this channel and me, you can go check out my Etsy, link in the description. Check out my new New Jersey scum pins. I'm super excited. When I opened these, I was like jaw dropped, like couldn't even move, just was like smiling so big for so long. So I'm really excited about this new product and I really hope you guys will take the time to check it out. Give this video a like, subscribe for more weekly art videos. Side note, I know I missed Friday's upload. I filmed two different videos, I edited them and both of them I was just like, you know what? I'm not comfortable putting this out. And that's part of what contributed to Sunday of me just being like, you know what? It might be time to take a break, <laughs> but I will be hitting you guys with a Monday, Wednesday, Friday upload schedule this week just to make up for missing Friday. I'm gonna give you a bonus video on Wednesday. So, I will see you then. Until next time, thank you for watching. Gang, gang, gang. Ship to ya daddy. We're, we're legitimately shipping it to ya daddy.